Section 10.2 is simplifying radicals. I can simplify radicals involving products and quotients. Big ideas here in this section. Radical expressions can be simplified using the multiplication and division properties of square roots. Rationalizing the denominator of a radical expression removes the radical from the denominator of the expression. A radical expression is an expression that contains a radical, such as 2 times the square root of 3 or the square root of x plus 3. Uh, so square roots are an example of a radical. Any expression that has a square root in it uh, is also a radical expression. A radical expression is simplified if the following statements are true. And all of these have to be true. Uh, the radicand, that's the thing inside our square root. So here, like our 3 or our x plus 3. Okay, that's what's inside our radical. It's called our radicand. If that has no perfect square factors other than 1, the radicand also can't have any fractions, and no radicals can appear in the denominator of a fraction. And that's how we have a radical expression in simplest form. Uh, take note on page 619 is the multiplication property of radicals. Uh, and there it says that we can take the square root of a product and split it into the square root of something times the square root of something. So for example, if I have the square root of 2x, that's the exact same thing as if I took the square root of 2 times the square root of x. So we can either write it as the multiplication of one radical or, sorry, one radical with multiplication or the multiplication of two radicals. Either one of those works, they mean the same thing. In example one, we're going to try and simplify this by getting rid of any perfect square factors. So the first thing I'm going to do here, guys, is a factor tree. Uh, we can factor 160 down in a lot of ways. What I'm going to use here is 16 and 10. It doesn't matter what we do as long as it multiplies to 160. So two things that when we multiply them together get us to 160. Uh, we don't want to use 1 and 160, though. That doesn't really help us get any closer to our prime factors. Here I'm trying to find my prime factors. This is a prime factorization and we're doing it by a factor tree. So 16 is 4 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. And then 2 is prime, so I can stop there. 10 is 2 times 5, and 2 and 5 are both prime as well. So here I have 2 times itself 5 times, and 1 5. And keep in mind, 160 is inside the square root, so my prime factorization is still inside a square root. Now, I'm going to look at all my prime factors and see if I can find any pairs of the same factor. So for example here, I have a 2 times a 2, a pair of 2's. That's going to come out of my square root as a 2, and I don't have them anymore so I can cross them out. And that's because, guys, this is the same as if I took the square root of 2 times 2. And the square root of 2 times 2 is the same as the square root of 4. And we know that the square root of 4 is 2. So I can take that 2 out right there. So again, I have another pair of 2's, which is actually the square root of 4. And when I take the square root of 4, I get a 2. And we're multiplying on the inside all of our factors, so we're going to multiply everything we take out as well. Now, if I look, I have a 2. I don't have a pair for that 2, so it stays where it is and I have a 5, and I don't have a pair for that 5, so I keep it where it's at. So outside of my radical, I have a 2 times 2, 4. And inside my radical, I have 2 times 5, which is 10. So 4 times the square root of 10 is the simplest form here of the square root of 160. Now, feel free to pause here and give this a try. Square root of 72, we're going to break this down. Uh, 8 times 9, 8 is 4 times 2, and 2 times 2, 9 is 3 times 3. If you're not sure what goes into it, guys, uh, we know 72 is even. So I can take 72 and do 2 and divide 72 by 2 and get 36, and then break down 36. So uh, we're looking for any factors there, guys. So if you didn't recognize 8 and 9 right away, that's OK. It's even, so we can try 2. And if you're not sure, that's always a good place to start, is try 2, then try 3, then try 5. Try your prime factors. So here I have 
three twos and two threes. And keep in mind that because 72 is inside a square root, so is my prime factorization. Now, here I have a pair of twos, and that comes out as a two. Again, it's the square root of four, which is two. I can't do anything with my last two, but I do have a pair of threes, which is just like if I took the square root of nine. Three times three is nine, and it's inside a square root here. Uh, comes out as a three. So a pair of threes comes out as a three because the square root of nine is three. Now to simplify this, outside of my radical, I have three times two, which is six. And inside my square root, I have a two. So here the square root of 72 is the same as six square roots of two. In example two, we're gonna do the same thing, except here we have variables inside our square roots. So we're gonna assume all of our variables are positive for now, uh, because otherwise we have to worry about square roots of negative numbers. And so it's easier for now uh, if we just pretend that they're always positive. So here, I'm gonna break down 54 as nine and six. Nine is three times three, and six is three times two. So I can write that as two, and then I have three threes. And that gets me back to 54, but now I also have n's here, so I'm gonna list those out the same way. And so I have n to the seventh power, which means I have n times itself seven times. And because that started inside a square root, it is still inside my square root. Now, uh, we're looking for any pairs. I don't have a pair of twos, but I do have a pair of threes. And that comes out as a three. I have a pair of n's. That comes out as an n. Another pair of n's. That comes out as an n. And another pair of n's. That comes out as an n. Just like a pair of threes comes out as a three, a pair of n's comes out as an n, and now we've used them, they're no longer inside our radical. So to simplify this a little bit, on the outside I have a three, n times n times n means n cubed to the third power. We represent repeated multiplication with exponents. Inside I have two times three, which is six, and one n left over. So three times n cubed times the square root of 6n is our simplified form here. Feel free to pause here and give this a try. Now, what's a simplified form? 80, I'm gonna break down as eight times 10, four times two, and two times two. 10, two times five. So right now, I have four twos, and a five, and nine m's. Outside of my radical, or inside my radical. And outside here, I have a negative m, and keep in mind the number in front of that is a one. So it's like negative one times m. Now I'm gonna look for any pairs. I have a pair of twos that can come out as a two, and remember we're multiplying. A pair of twos that can come out as a two, and remember we're multiplying. Here I have one, two, three, four pairs of m's. And I ran out of room there, so we're just gonna multiply those there, but all of that goes together. So when I simplify this, My number parts, two times two times negative one gives me negative four. And when I multiply my m's, I have one, two, three, four, five. m to the fifth power. Keep in mind, guys, this m right here that's already outside, that's already been part of a pair. We can't put this m with this m uh, because this one is already like a complete pair. It's already outside, it's already a complete thing. This m is just a square root 
And those are two different things. The square root of m is not the same as an m outside, so we cannot put those together. So here, again, I use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 m's, m to the fifth power, and negative 4. Inside my square root, I still have a 5 left, and my last m. And that is my simplified form there. In example 3, we're going to be multiplying two radical expressions. Something to notice here, guys, uh, our square root bar, the top part, ends right there, which means the 7t are the last things that go inside that square root. Okay, my square root bar here ends after the squared. That means the 14t squared are the only things that go in that radical. Uh, square root signs, guys, are just like parentheses in that they're a grouping symbol. And that bar on top, I think it's called a vinculum, um, is where that ends. So here, remember our property says that we can take and combine our square roots under one radical. So I can take the square root of 7 times t and the square root of 14, which I'm going to write as 7 and 2 with my factor tree, and t squared. Now, this 2 and this 3, they're already outside, just like our m was before. Uh, so we keep them outside. It's, all, it's like they've already gotten their pairs. Now, we look for any pairs. We can see we have a pair of t's here. I can take that out as a t. We also have a pair of 7's, and it's a little bit harder to see that because they're not side by side. But that doesn't matter, guys. They just have to be the same ver value. So I'm going to take that 7 out as well that pair of sevens. So here, when I multiply on my outsides, I get 42t. And on the inside, all I have left is a 2 and a t. So again, we can combine multiplication of square roots into one square root and reduce it that way. Now feel free to pause here and give this a try. Uh, my 3 is outside my square root, so that stays outside. Inside my square root, however, I have a 6 which is a 2 times a 3. And over here, inside my square root, I have an 18, which is going to be a 3 times a 3 times a 2. And whatever's inside my square roots here, guys, my radicands, I can combine into one square root. Now I'm going to look for pairs. I've got a pair of 3's here that I can take out as a 3, and a pair of 2's that I can take out as a 2. Again, that's like taking 2 times 2, square root of 4, which is 2. So on the outside, I'm going to have 18. And on the inside, I'm going to have a 3 left. So 18, square root of 3. Same idea here in B. Here I don't have anything outside, so what's outside my radicals is just 1s. We don't have to worry about those. Inside, however, I have a 2 and an A in my first radical, my first square root. And in my second, I have a 9, which is 3 times 3, and a cubed, so 3 a's. Now we look for any pairs. I have a pair of 3's that can come out, a pair of a's that can come out, and another pair of a's. They're not side by side, but that doesn't matter. We can multiply in any order. So on the outside, I have 3. a times a is a squared. And inside, all I have left is a 2. Here, I have a 7 and a 3 outside my square root. Those stay outside my square roots. Those are whole numbers. Those are separate. Inside my square root, I have a 5 and an x. And in my second square root, which again, we can combine here, I'm going to break down my 20 to be 2 times 2 times 5, and x to the 5th power. Now, when I go to pair of these, I have a pair of 2's, a pair of x's, a pair of x's. Now, uh, separate but still works are these 5's as a pair, and another pair of x's. Remember, 1 is always a factor, so inside my square root when everything else cancels, it's just a 1, but the square root of 1 is 1. So now I have nothing left for a square root. My numbers multiply to 210, and x times x times x is x cubed. 
So I don't have a radical left here at all.